Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part time musician who wants to go full time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. On the Profitable Musician Show, we give you practical tips and strategies to increase the income you're already making and tap into new streams so you can create more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. We also help you think like a business owner so you can keep more of the money that you make. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, author of the best-selling book, The Musician's Profit Path, and host of the popular Profitable Musician Summit. And as you can probably tell, I am obsessed with helping musicians like you to build a rock-solid fan base and income foundation so you can fund the music you are driven to create, share your message with the world, and fulfill your God-given purpose as a musician without stressing out about where your next dollar is going to come from. You've got the talent. You just need the marketing and business tools to take it to the next level. Now let's dive in to the Profitable Musician Show. Hey, Profitable Musicians, it's Brie Noble, and I wanted to do a quick training for you today about the five steps for you to turn listeners into fans using Spotify for Artist tools. So this is kind of stemming out of a project I've been doing personally. It, I love Spotify. I am a big Spotify consumer. I have a paid plan and I have been building, I am like a, I love playlists. I love mixtapes from the old days. I love making playlists. That's kind of why I started a radio station and a podcast because I just love putting music together that sets a mood. I love playing music in my kitchen when I'm making dinner. I love using it as motivation when I am exercising or, you know, doing dishes or whatever it is that I, you know, don't want to do. I need a little bit of pick me up. So I am a music consumer. And I think what happens sometimes with musicians is we forget to look at it from the perspective of the consumer. And since I've been doing this big project lately of trying to basically get all of the music that I'd already identified as music that I love um, from days of buying CDs, from days of downloading MP3s, you know, all that stuff that I've done in the past. I want to kind of consolidate all of that into my Spotify account so I can really enjoy those songs that I may have forgotten about. And I, it also will help me learn about new artists that are similar or you know, maybe I had an album that was downloaded in 2015 and they've come out with new music since then that I didn't even know about because I forgot to listen to that artist because I wasn't connected with them on Spotify. So anyway, I've been doing this big project and investing a lot of time, mostly because I've got boxes of CDs in my garage and the last time I moved, I just, I couldn't bear to get rid of them yet. And even though I've got all of them downloaded on my computer, I just feel like I just couldn't do it, you know? But I feel like if I get to the point where I've got everything that I want in Spotify and it's being utilized the way that I want, then maybe I can, can let go and feel like, okay, I'm not gonna forget about this music. So as I've been doing this, I've been approaching it from the perspective of a fan in many cases, but sometimes from the perspective of a listener who's like, okay, in 2015, I downloaded this thing from maybe Noise Trade or something. And I remember being interested in this artist, liking them, but like not really diving in, but like, oh my gosh, I probably want to listen to them later. So I download it. So a lot of times I was not necessarily a fan of these artists when I was looking them up on Spotify. So I was coming at it from somebody who like, maybe had heard about an artist or you know had seen them somewhere and wanted to learn more and so in this process i was learning a lot about artists um just doing a lot of research and finding things that i like and it really got me thinking about how we as musicians need to think about spotify in the way that we promote ourselves 
from the perspective of what a consumer is doing and how they're consuming it. So I kind of jotted down these five steps that I think maybe some of them I think you're probably doing, especially if you've set up your Spotify for Artists account. If you haven't, you need to go do that right now. Stop this video and go do it artist.spotify.com. You need to claim your account if you haven't already. You can either do that through your distributor or in my case, I was able to actually do it directly on Spotify for artists, which was nice. And once you do that, like it says it'll take two to three days, but mine was actually immediately available. So you may be able to get it right away, but you need to go in there and start updating some of these things because they've added a lot of tools and they're continuing to add them. So the first thing I want you to do once you get your Spotify for Artists account, or if you have one, go in there and start looking around because things have been added that probably weren't there last time that you checked. So the first and most obvious one is your bio and your, you know, your profile pic and all that. Like for me, because all of my top songs at this moment are from my Christmas album and because in general those are my top songs because I have one song on my Christmas album that got really popular got on a lot of playlists um, it was always showing up as my profile picture and I didn't want that I don't want my profile picture to be a picture of my Christmas album so that's something you need to make sure to do go and update that make sure it's not a profile picture from 10 years ago you need to look like you are today um, and then make sure that your bio is updated in there because people do look. I certainly, as I was doing my research on artists, I would look in there and I'd be like, gosh, this lead singer sounds like somebody I've heard before. I wonder if they were in another band and I'd go look at their, you know, their bio and see where, you know, where they were from. Or I'd be like, oh, this, this artist, they sound like are there four people? Are there three people? Are they all women? Are, you know, I wanted to look that up. So make sure that you have that information in there. Secondly, inside of that area is your social media links. So you need to make sure those are updated. And if you have a Wikipedia page, they give you an option to put that in there too, which is cool. It can it make you look, you know, cool if you've got a Wikipedia page. If you don't, you can always go create one for yourself if you want to. But be sure and put your Instagram in there, your Facebook and your Twitter, but especially your Instagram. I feel like people that are in Spotify are more likely to be on Instagram and that is a really easy way for them to connect with people. I know a lot of people that like the first thing they do if they want to stay connected with someone is if there's an Instagram button, they'll click it and do that easy follow. It takes a second, but yet they can still keep up with what's going on with the artist instead of, you know, maybe taking a bigger step and joining their email list or something. And maybe this, you know, if they follow your Instagram, that will happen eventually. But this is the first micro step. You need to think about the way that listeners are getting to know you. They're not going to just take that big leap, right? They want to take micro steps first. You know, when you're dating somebody first, you, you take their phone number, you give out your phone number and then next you make that call and then you meet, you know, so it's not like you're, they're going to jump into being on your email list right away. So make sure that those social media links are there. I can guarantee that people that really want to stay connected with you, if they like your music enough, they will click on that. So make sure that they're there. So that's step number two. After fixing your bio and your picture inside of there, make sure that you have updated your social media links. Third thing. Okay, so this is one that I hear a lot of people talking about and it's something that we can't entirely control, but I want you to be aware of it and ways that you can influence it. So this is your top five songs. Those are the things that show up right when people go into your Spotify. And if you're like me, I mean, this is coming out in January or February, 2021. Right now for me, almost all of my top songs, if you look at, you can actually expand it. At least you can on the computer version and you can see the top 10 and eight out of my top 10 are all from my holiday album. So if that's the case for you, we want to try to work on influencing that so we can change it because people aren't going to want to listen to Christmas music all year round. And 
they people only give you a few minutes of their time when they're checking you out and the first thing that they're going to want to hear is your top songs but if they're all holiday music they're going to be at a loss to where to start probably the next thing they'll start with is your latest release but what you really want is those top songs to really be your best songs now these are these are caused by the algorithm in Spotify. So there's only so much that you can control this, but there are things that you can do. So recently I did a podcast episode with Cassandra F Kabinsky, and one of the things that she did, because she had this problem, she had songs that were like from 2005, because they had gotten on to Dance Moms and like some other great sync placements, but those were her top placements. And she's like, that was 15 years ago. I sound totally different. I want to get different songs into my top five. So one thing she did was she collaborated with someone else, like another producer who had more Spotify listeners than she did. And, she, and because of that, she was able to get that particular collab pushed up into her top five because she was able to to tap into his audience and get those listens so she could push it up so that's one thing that you can do is try to maybe collaborate with someone that has more of a spotify presence and be able to move the songs that you do with them that are more current up to the top of your top five now, another thing that you can do, and remember, if you, if you expand and see your top 10, you'll know, okay, these ones that are not in the top five, they're six through 10, they have a potential of getting up into the top five if I just do something to push them up the list. So what you can do is you can pursue getting playlist placements for those. That would be my, my biggest suggestion. So you can go out and contact playlist curators specifically, finding them, um, going out to them, finding great playlists that you love, that you think your music fits into, and pursuing those directly. Another thing that you can do is you can use something like Submit Hub, which we use for Women of Substance sometimes when we want to find some great music to add into the mix. Um, there are tons of really great Spotify playlists on there that you can submit to and it's not very expensive to submit just be very choosy make sure you're submitting to the right ones many of my students in my rock your next release program have said that they've been able to get some great placements through there for a very very low cost we're talking 50 cents to two dollars <laughs> and they've been able to really push up their spotify plays so just know that like for me as a consumer when i was looking around and like i said these artists that i had kind of taken note of but i didn't really know much about their music i just thought okay i want to listen to more of them later and i had downloaded their music when i went to their spotify profile the first thing i did is listen to their top five songs um and then, of course, I would seek out the ones that I had already downloaded to try to find those. But a lot of times, sometimes they weren't even there. They were hard to find. They were buried within uh, EPs and singles. And so you're going to want to try to get the ones that you want people to hear first onto your top five. All right. So going on to that same idea is my step number four, which is creating your own playlist that you highlight. So this is a way that you can highlight the songs that you want people to listen to on your profile, especially if you've got a lot of music, if you've got a lot of, like if I were to scroll down into your singles and EP section and there are just like rows and rows, right? Because it gets a little crazy. I'm hoping that they're going to do something about this eventually because it just gets to be too much, especially if you have multiple mixes of the same song all released as singles. I really think they need to separate out EPs and singles, but you know, I can't control Spotify. So anyway, if it just gets overwhelming with how many things that people have to look at on your Spotify, you want to direct them. You want to show them, you know, these are the highlights of my career. These are the things you should be listening to. Or if you feel like you, you've, 
evolved over the years and you want people to more pay attention to your new stuff, then you can create a playlist for that. But if you create a playlist, you make that public and then you put it prominently on your profile. So you have an ability to highlight that playlist. And when you're editing your Spotify for Artists profile, it allows you to create um, what they call a pick, a playlist pick. And if you upload an image for it, it makes a big, huge box on the right-hand side of your Spotify account that highlights that playlist. It also, when they scroll down past your albums and singles, it will be like, you know, artist playlists, and it will highlight that as well. And I personally, as a listener, listen to those because I know that those are their best songs. They want me to listen to those. It's gonna give me the highlights of their career. So I would definitely, definitely create that for yourself because you want to be able to direct your potential fans into what they should be listening to. It's super easy to create. Playlists are so fun to create. And doing this highlighting option is really, really easy for you. It takes a few seconds. So definitely do that. Number five is another one of those things that we can't quite control, but we can influence it. So it's called Fans Also Like. It's a tab inside of your Spotify that anyone can see. And although we cannot really choose those because they're all chosen by algorithm, we can know what is causing them to be chosen and try to influence that. So the biggest thing that influences this is shared fans. So people that follow you, people that listen to your music, who else do they also follow and listen to? Now you can't control people's behavior, but what you can do is try to get on playlists with artists that are similar that you want to be associated with. And because of that, they will naturally be listening to both of your musics and potentially be following both of you because they like that playlist. They, you know, I certainly do that. When I hear a song on a playlist after a song that I've already liked, I'm paying more attention and I might also follow that person. So working to get on playlists that make sense for you and that associate you with artists that you want to be associated with is a big way that you can influence this. Um, the other thing that you can do that will be really helpful and I also you know, really promote in my Rock Your Next Release program is getting press whenever you do a release. Now, the reason that this helps is because this is driven by an algorithm which goes and not only searches what's happening in Spotify, but the whole internet. So if you get on blogs that or podcasts that highlight artists that are similar to you that you want to be associated with, Spotify algorithm will notice that. I'll be like, oh, look, you know, Brie was on a blog that also Sarah Groves was on. So maybe their music is similar and they would have similar fans. Or um, another thing that can influence it in that way is having similar descriptions as an artist. So let's just say that, you know, you are, let's, let's take something really, really specific, right? Let's say that you're, you call your music Americana hip hop, okay? So let's just say that that is what you're calling your music they're going to look for other people that might also call their music that and associate you with them. So if you want to be seen as like associated with a particular artist, I would go and see how they describe themselves, how their press is describing them and try to use those words because not only will fans of that artist identify you with them and be like, Oh, you know, that's how they describe, Taylor Swift, I'm sure I'm going to love, you know, Olivia Rodrigo or something because they're being described in the same way. They're being associated with each other by the press. Uh, and it doesn't have to be big press, right? It can just be online blog podcast kind of press. So fans will notice that and then so will the algorithm. 
So you need to think about finding ways to associate yourself with artists that you want to be associated with, whether it's through words and descriptions or through trying to get on playlists or blogs or podcasts that those same artists are on. And that's a way that you can influence the, um, the algorithm of the fans also like section with let, let me tell you, I used that so much when I was doing my art, my research and I'm still in the process of this project. Um, because if I found an artist I really liked, I'd be like, gosh, you know, I love this artist. I can't believe I didn't know about them. I wonder who else I don't know about that is like this. And I always clicked that tab. And sometimes I'd find artists that I knew and I'm like, no wonder I like this artist because I like four of these other artists on here. You know, it makes total sense. Sometimes I'd be like, oh my gosh, who is this? I've never heard of this person. And sometimes it would be like an obscure person that only put out one album in 2017 or something and hasn't put anything out since. But I was so glad I found them because they were really, really good. Or maybe it's someone that's totally new. Someone that just started putting out music lately and I just never have heard of them. But because they were able to associate themselves with an artist I already liked, I discovered them that way. And another thing when you really work on this section, it will also make it such that Spotify will offer up your music to people that like these other artists that are on that list. So for example, if I'm listening to someone's album and in the background, I'm just working or something and the album ends, it will start playing similar artists, what it thinks I would like. And almost every time it is spot on. I love the music that it chooses for me. And then I meet, oh my gosh, I need to see who this is. I don't want to lose this artist. Who are they? And so I would click on them and then I would go down that rabbit hole. So um, just keep in mind that there are so many ways that the Spotify algorithm helps us as artists. I know that sometimes we get a little bit bitter about how little we get paid on there, but we need to look at the positive side of how much marketing help we are getting for free from Spotify and the algorithm. And yes, we can't entirely control it, but we can influence it. So use these five steps that I gave you and be conscientious and strategic about how you use them to influence the things that you can't control and definitely control the things that you can control. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful. If you want to learn more about this kind of stuff and just other ways that you can really, really maximize your marketing and opportunities for your releases, you definitely want to check out my workshop. It's totally free. It's at rockyournextrelease.com. See you guys later. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.